Hello, this is going to be a talk today with Claire from Volvo Cancer UK discussing lichen sclerosis. And I'm just waiting for her to come along. And I absolutely hate this part of it all. Ah, oh. go, you, go live. Just waiting for her to accept. I've just. Hello. See. Hello. Hello. Are we working? Can you hear me okay? Yes, can you hear me okay? Yes, I can. Good. Good start. No, no echoes. Fantastic. So, um, so for those who don't know us, I, um, your name is Claire Baumhauer. Yeah, I was going to say Claire Baumhauer <laughs> from <laughs> Volva Cancer UK and Lichen Scrotus UK that they've worked together. So I'm going to give you a quick bit of background about myself. But the whole point of this um, live is that Claire discusses today about lichen sclerosis and tomorrow about vulvar cancer because they are two big um, subjects and we decided that they need their own time each to do them properly and give them justice. So I'm um, Jane Lewis of I Always Show People to Had Another 50 New Followers This Morning of this book, Me and My Menopausal Vagina. And I um, am bringing awareness about vaginal atrophy and dryness. And I've never met Claire or haven't spoken to her except for 10 seconds yesterday when we had a trial run of this. But the reason we got in, in contact is in my book, I mentioned lichen sclerosis and vulvar cancer. And then Emma from um, Lichen Sclerosis UK messaged me one day and said, wow, thank you for messaging me about, it. thank you for mentioning it in your book, because I know it just doesn't get mentioned. And I've had um, vaginal dryness for a long time now, but my very first diagnosis was lichen sclerosis. And I was diagnosed that for a month. So when I, I then did a lot of research on it, but I only know a little, um, unlike Claire and Emma, who know absolutely masses. But I was given the very wrong treatment for someone with vaginal atrophy, and I was given the very high potent steroid, which actually made my vaginal dryness much worse. But we're going to talk about the, 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 whole, the whole sort of picture of it, because a lot of the symptoms for vaginal dryness are actually very similar to lichen sclerosis. And this is where diagnoses can get mixed and muddled along the way. So if you'd like to say, Claire, really, who, who you are and, and your website and everything else, because you and Emma do so much. Oh, yes, thank you. I'm Claire Bormhauer, like we said. Um, I was diagnosed with lichen sclerosis and vulvar cancer in 2016. Both I hadn't heard of. Um, because of that, that made me then start to do my own research and awareness um, and I found a support group for lichen sclerosis where I met Emma. Um, we became friends online, talking quite a lot. Um, we both were quite similar. We laughed at the same things. Um, so it made it a lot, lot, lot easier. Um, we then decided to start doing awareness together rather than be separate as lichen sclerosis and vulvar cancer because they do come hand in hand quite often. Um, it made sense for us to be together, so there'd be two of us. Um, so then we started um, our awareness pages on Instagram, Facebook, and of course on, on uh, Twitter, um, which has been going two years now. Um, we also have support groups. We started more of those. Um, I was originally in her lichen sclerosis uh, Facebook page uh, group um, for a couple of years, I think, before we started to talk more. Um, but at that stage, I'd already started my own Facebook um, support group for vulva cancer for those in the UK which there are now over 100 of us in that support group. Um, and then off of that, I then opened up another support group for those with VIN, which is a pre-cancer um, to do with, with vulva cancer. Um, I also, for lymphedema as well, for those that have lymphedema due to um, cancer treatments, um, I also help run um, an admin with Emma, other support groups for lichen sclerosis. I help her on her group. And also on, we have one for children, also she has one for men. So we have got quite a lot of groups with us. My website and uh, Emma's is on my Instagram page in the bio. You can click on that and it gives all our links to our Facebook closed groups, all the links to our awareness pages as well. So they're easy to find. Um, so all that really has been going on for about two years. Yeah, I mean, you are both doing an amazing job. You do so because they both work extremely hard. You both work, don't you, nor, under normal circumstances regards we haven't got this virus going around. And you both have families 
and um, they do so much raising awareness and it's completely for free you know no money is made from this whatsoever and they work really hard and they're both um you know i've been around for a couple of years and i can really see a difference you're making you know you work alongside you're you're working with sort of eve as well aren't you the eve appeal for the five cancers and you're you're um you're doing you're doing so much the pair of you and it's a, another discussion that we have to start you know, we have to start talking more about all these different cancers because we can get five all together in the, in the gynae area. And it's always assumed, you know, it's always assumed that cervical cancer is the one we hear about all the time, isn't it? But there's endometrio, end, endometrial cancer, there's it's endometrial, ovarian, cervical, vulva, and then vagina. And they're in that list of, of the ones the most common. Um, so if you could we're going to talk properly about the vulva cancer tomorrow, which is what yours went on to become. But if you can sort of say how your you know, lichen sclerosis started off from a young girl, really, because there are lots of little girls we hear with that soreness and itch that are sort of passed on as not uh, sort of being almost not, not ignored, but it's always thrush or something. And obviously a lot of those might are highly likely not lichen sclerosis, but there could be quite a few who are actually slipping through the net who are being missed. Yes. Uh, well, that's how I met Emma, obviously, on the Facebook group. And Emma today will be answering our questions. She's going to be under Lichen Sclerosis UK Awareness that comes up. So any questions that get asked that I'm talking about, or if I can't remember any words, which does happen with me, um, Emma's going to help us and put that on the comments side for us. But yes, I was, I was probably about four or five when I first noticed symptoms. Um, when I was at school, I couldn't sit still. I was always called a fidgeter. My mum always called me that I wouldn't stop fidgeting all the time. I won't keep still in my chair. Um, I was quite often sore and itchy when I went to the toilet. It burned a bit. And and do you remember all? Do you remember this now as a, as an adult? Do you remember it all? I, I do remember bits of it. Once I was yes. diagnosed, obviously yes. it made me then look back and think about right. and remember all the things. But I do remember as a child, yes. Um, and I was a bit embarrassed by that as well. So I didn't really tell my mum or anybody. Um, it wasn't until one day, at quite a young age. I'm guessing now about five or six I can't remember because unfortunately my mum passed away um seven years ago with pancreas cancer so I can't even ask her about it I was like no. no after but I do remember um her hearing me scream once in the toilet because I was trying to go to the toilet and it was just so painful it was just it was just well it is like hot knives yes. um all, all around your vulva and it, I just couldn't go to the toilet I would stop myself and stand up and not go and then try again I would then go to the shower and try to so urinate in the, in the shower um, because she heard me, she, she asked me what was wrong. At that point, I did say to her then, you know, that it just it burns when I go to the toilet. Um, I didn't tell her all my symptoms. I think I was too young to understand. They were all yes. together. Yeah. Um, so she did take me to see our, our GP. And our GP at the time was a paediatric GP. Um, obviously, I was quite embarrassed and shy at that young age. So I didn't really say much myself. My mum would do the talking for me and just said that, you know, it burns and stung when I went to the toilet. Um, he never looked at my vulva, I never really asked me any questions. He no. just straight away said it's cystitis. Yeah. Um, so he gave uh, my mum some creams and other uh, sachets of drink, told me to drink plenty of, uh, of fluids and do all that, which I did do. It helped a little bit, but not a great deal. It just, it just um, made the urine less strong is what he was doing, yeah, that's yeah, all. Yeah, but it was yeah. stopping stopping the burning yeah. but it wasn't yeah. obviously helping no. I've given no. creams but I don't know what they were but nothing really helped you know this continued on for, for quite a long time um I sort of kept it to myself as I got older because I was getting more embarrassed didn't want to go back to a GP to talk about you know down there my private parts um and it wasn't until um my late teens that it did sort of go into a mission in and out for a couple of years what happened with your period Fine. when your period started what happened then um, that was okay i didn't really notice much of a difference wearing sanctuary towels or anything like that would abbreviate it i could never use um tan packs or tam uh, tampons never at all i gave up trying to use those because it was just too painful um again kept a lot of it to myself um, in my early 20s, I then went back to the GP. Probably in my 20s, I probably went back to a GP about five or six times. And it wasn't the same GP either. It was different mm -hmm. GPs. Yeah. Um, and again, none of them ever once asked to look at my vulva or right. anything. At, at that stage, um, I would just say that um, I, had, I was itchy and sore. I never even used the word vulva because at that stage, I hadn't even heard of it. I, no, no. I would call it my vagina, like a lot of yeah. people do, because they get yeah. confused, obviously, with the outside being the vulva and the inside is your vagina. Yes, I, would, yeah. I would say the wrong thing anyway to the GP. Um, but again, never looked. And he said, fush. You know, and I'll be given fush cream. Mm -hmm. I went away with that. 
um, again, it helped a tiny bit at the time, but yes, not a lot. Yeah. Um, yeah. But then I would go back again and just get told, fush, again, still was never looked at. Yeah. Um, but during that time, I've had two babies. They were both C-sections due to other complications. Um, so I never, luckily, had to have vaginal births. Yeah. Um, I've had eight smear tests over all those years. And how and were both, those smear tests? Were they painful? Um, they... The, the first one was, um, and it did make me apprehensive when I went to others. Again, I didn't know what I had at the time. Yeah. Not Even though I've had eight smear tests in, in all my life, not one nurse ever mentioned anything to me. I didn't them either, because obviously I'm thinking what I've got is normal, because mm -hmm. nothing had ever said. But I had the classic um, lichen sclerosis symptoms, which is figure of eight, which is white patches. My skin was quite white and silvery. And did um, that papery? Was it that papery, silvery? Yes, it, was, mm. it was thin in areas. It would, it would crack and, and split a little bit, not a great deal. Quite sore when I went to the toilet. was itchy. If it did rub with underwear or wearing jeans. And I this was year, like, year in, year out. Year yeah. in, year out. I would, yeah. get, like, I would get blisters, um, blisters all the time. Um, and it would, you know, it'd be quite difficult. I tried all different treatments myself, um, like pseudo creams was, was, was my friend for quite a number of years. Um, mm -hmm. I would use different things, but I would still keep going back to the doctors and just get getting told it was thrush. Again, I would self-treat with thrush because you see the advert saying vagina, yes. vagina yeah. seal, you know, itching. And I think, well, maybe all women have itching. And because yeah. of those smear tests I had, nobody ever mentioned anything. Yeah. Obviously, I don't see other people's vulvas very often, if at all. No, so I had no. no idea what mine wasn't right or didn't look right. I hadn't even no. looked at mine, to be honest, yeah. properly until I was diagnosed. Yes. Um, so I didn't know what I was seeing wasn't right or normal for me because yeah. I'd never had a difference. Because I've had it since a child. and had No, you didn't know what you were supposed to look like. Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. During all that time, um, obviously... Uh, the lichen sclerosis was active. Um, even though I did go into remission quite a few times on and off, not by doing anything specific. I changed mm. my diet, food. I've done things myself, used simple soap, simple, didn't use any perfumes. Um, it helped a bit, but nothing, you know, got rid of it totally. It did disappear, I think, a bit in my teenage years, but then it came back late 20s. Yeah. Um, but again, it was on and off throughout the years. Um, and I, I did try other things myself, but nothing would really work. So then I went back to the doctors again in my late thirties, um, because at this stage I'd noticed that my clitoris had buried. It was it was gone. Um, I then sort of looked a bit more and noticed that it did look quite different as I was getting older. Again, weren't sure if that was normal, um, but it turns out that I'd lost everything. My labour had shrunk, stuck together. This is all to do with uh, the lichen sclerosis. Um, but again, I didn't sort of notice it was that wrong or different because it right. happened so slowly over and over. Yes, yes. And I didn't look at it often enough to know. Um, so when I saw that GP, he said that he wasn't sure whether to refer me to a gynaecologist or a dermatologist, mm -hmm. but he just, he ummed and ahed a bit. He gave me some cream, sent me away. Um, I went back again after two weeks of using the cream, it done nothing for me. I don't remember what the cream was now. Um, but he then said, oh, I don't know whether to refer you to a gynaecologist or a dermatologist. Again, he said that again and I went away. Um, I then gave up going. I sort of lost faith with GPs. And that's what you hear a lot with women, they give up going um yeah. i felt i thought what's the point i'm gonna go and he's gonna tell me it's fresh again yeah um, so yeah. every time i went um i did go back again and i asked to see a different doctor which was, which was a woman doctor she actually for the first time ever gave me a swab i'd never in all those years getting told i had i had fresh ever had swab i didn't even know you could do that swab yeah that, i mean yeah i mean one one of the vulva, vulva dermatologists said to me we've got to stop giving women thrush cream without a positive diagnosis yeah. you cannot I've, assume I've, I've, yeah. I've had it once so i don't even think i've even had thrush in my lifetime no to be no um, so she did swab me i then had blood tests um, i went back and saw her two or three times actually she was the best out of all the doctors i'd seen she was trying to find a reason for, mm. for what i was getting um she i had blood tests she thought it might have been diabetes linked um, in the end, they put it down to menopause. Mm -hmm. I was in my late 30s, um, about to reach 40. She put it down to vaginal dryness, maybe. It was menopause limbs. It wasn't given anything or told anything, just sent away. Again, with nothing to use, no knowledge, no nothing. So I then sort of thought, I've got to live with this. So I, I did carry on. And then in 2015, I noticed... Um, I had a really large um, cut, almost where you, you cut when you have a baby, yes. um, in the perineum area. And that got bigger and bigger over probably about a year. 
Again, I ignored it because I've you, been did you, told... you ignored it for a year, did yeah. you? Yes, because yeah. I've been told it's, it's all this, that and the other. I lost yeah. faith in going to doctors. Um, again, I still would only ever shown that a couple of doctors um, evolve in the first place. weren't even looking at it. Um, and then I, I've ignored, ignored it for a good year, I'd say. It did get worse. And then at the end of 2015, it turned into like an ulcer. Right. Quite p shaped um, And that also, I looked at that and I thought, oh, it's turned into like the, the tear's gone now. Because I thought the tear would heal itself, mm -hmm. but it didn't. Mm -hmm. So again, I ignored it. I just put pseudo cream, pseudo cream on. I'd had a smear test, by the way, with having this ulcer. Um, oh gosh! Which, which which turned out to be cancer, but I didn't know at the time. And and no one saw no, the nurse who no, did it. Nothing. No, I didn't say anything either. To be honest, at that stage, I'd given up. Um, she saw what I was like, but still, just done the smear test. My smear test have always came back clear. I've not got the HPV virus. Everything in that, that side was fine. Uh, went away. Um, and then within the space of six months of 2016. The ulcer grew quite rapidly, quite big. So by the March, it got to the stage where I couldn't forget about it anymore because it hurt to sit down, it hurt to move. I thought, I'm going to have to go back again. I didn't really want to go. But I went back because of it got quite large at this stage. It was a good mm. 50 pence size um, ulcer. Oh, um, and it, it was in the, uh, uh, the area where when you wipe yourself as well, it hurts. So I thought, I'm going to have to go for that reason. So I did go and I saw another different GP, another lady. She actually looked. Um, I said to her that, what I've got and what's happening. Um, she looked and then she straight away said, I've got herpes. And she said, uh, take yourself to the gum clinic. And I think my face was quite shocked that she said both herpes and the gum clinic. Um, and I thought, you know, no way I've got an STI. You know, I, and I said, to, I just looked so shocked. She looked again and said, you know, how many partners have you had? I said, well, I've been with my partner for more than 26 years. Yeah. So then at that stage, I wouldn't have gone to a gum clinic. Um, because yeah. I knew it wouldn't, couldn't have been herpes. I would have been embarrassed to have gone to one, I think, as well. So I wouldn't have gone. So I would be dead now, that's for sure. Um, but then she looked back, because my face was quite shocked, looked again at the ulcer, and then she said, actually, it could be vulva cancer. Um, and I'd never heard the word vulva cancer. I'd even heard the word vulva until that day, actually, because I called it all vagina down there. Yeah. And I was quite shocked. She said, um, I'm going to refer you urgently two weeks. And she looked at me in the eye and, got, and said, please go to this appointment. If you don't get an appointment within two weeks, you must come back and see me. She was proper looked at me and said, you must go and please go. So I, I, I left the surgery in a, well, in a daze really, shock that a cancer I'd never heard of, it could be cancer. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that night I just broke down in tears because I thought, you know, I've had this tear for me by two, two years at this stage and the ulcer yeah. nearly a year. And you've been, had the original symptoms from a four year old. Yes, for many years. Yeah, still haven't yeah. heard my process at this point either. Just yeah. um, I stupidly Googled, which you shouldn't do, um, and found all sorts. And I just thought, I'm dead, you know, I've got a couple of months of that because I've had the symptoms so long that there's no way that, you know, mm -hmm. I can't survive this. But I went to get a biopsy. Um, luckily, it's all done very fast for me. So at the end of the end of March, I saw the GP. I got my, uh, I had my biopsy just the day before my birthday, actually, in April. Um, that came back. I went in. I sort of expected it to be cancer, I suppose. I did ask during the biopsy if, it, if they thought it looked like cancer, but they say they can't obviously tell us that. Um, and I was then told that I had um, lichen sclerosis and vulva cancer. So both conditions I'd never heard of, never seen anywhere. Um, I then had a few weeks of waiting for scans to find out how far it spread. Um, what was going to happen, you know, how long, how long I had to live, I was basically thinking about. Um, then I had to think about telling my family, only my husband knew at this stage. Mm -hmm. So I decided to keep it all quiet until I had a plan of what was going to happen to me, how long I had, what was going to happen. I thought, I won't talk everything, all the details first. Yeah, yeah. I did Google it a bit. I started to look around the internet. I couldn't find anything about vulva cancer. I couldn't see any charities. Or, or anything about lichen sclerosis. I, I've never heard it anywhere. I've never seen it in doctor's surgeries, not when I've had smear tests. So at that stage, I started to get a bit angry about it all because I thought I've been diagnosed with something I knew nothing about. Mm -hmm. I heard of other gynecological cancers. I, I heard of ovarian. Um, I knew slightly some of the symptoms to do with bloating, you know, and I'd obviously I'd heard of cervical because that's everywhere. Um, and I knew similar sort of to do with what their symptoms were. And I heard of wound cancer before. Um, but I'd never heard of vulva cancer. No. So um, I did look into it quite a lot more. 
Um, I'll talk more about the vulva cancer side tomorrow. About yeah, so I think if what we'll do is that's where you've got to, as in from basically not ignoring your child if they have all these symptoms. And if you keep being told they've got thrush or urine infection and nothing's changing, you've got to find a paediatric vulva dermatologist and to put the thought into the head. So we're going to stop at the point of cancer because that is a complete story tomorrow because the treatment and everything you've been through is a whole hour on its own. So if we go back to, because I've got I've printed it all out. I was very good. I, I worked out how to do all your notes. <laughs> so if we go back to the signs of lichen sclerosis. Yes, well, the signs are they're different for everybody. That's what makes it so yes. hard. Also, there's yeah. a lot of older conditions that have similar symptoms. There are so many things yeah. That, yeah, that cross over. And you know, your list is here, but I'll let you read them out. But I would say that nearly all of those are on there also for vagina atrophy and many other skin conditions. But we're not talking about those today. This is purely about LS and, um, yeah, ultimately LS. But it's why more ladies are um, getting missed especially if they're um, postmenopausal where it's, it is potentially more common um, and but because we have very similar symptoms so yeah, if you go through they thought I had originally that, that yeah been, so uh, you go through your list of all the symptoms you have here but well, I've had to write them down as well because there are so many and everyone's different um, how it's looked at is they say that the the skin is like like you said before cigarette paper thin can be crinkly white crinkled or thickened patches as well they can be white um they can be itchy and sore um you can get bruises blisters blood blisters um ulcers as well that um, appear after scratching and rubbing um your urine can sting and uh, irritate um sexual intercourse it can become uncomfortable and quite often people tear um and have splits through intercourse um discomfort to bowel movements as well i had that when i was a child actually which my dermatologist asked me that recently. Did I have any problems as a child, um, which is what, how we realised I had it since a child, um, with, um, with bowel movements and being constipated, and I had. So that's quite common in children more. Um, which, like I said before, because children obviously can get LS. You can be any age. The youngest reported that we know of in the UK is two years old. Oh, um, so it, it, quite often they say it disappears or it can grow out of it and it goes. But it, obviously, I'm not a doctor. I'm not medically trained. This is all my own opinion and what I've, I've read and researched. But from what I, I understand is that, yes, it can go, but we don't think it goes forever. We think it comes back. Maybe, mm -hmm. you know, you don't have it during your early teenage years. It goes into remission. Yeah. Into remission. It, yeah, because my I, I wasn't using any treatment whatsoever. And mine did go into remission on and off throughout those years. Mm -hmm. So that's why I think, and I, I do remember being a teen at 18, 19, 20, 21. I don't remember having many symptoms back Probably then. Probably when you had a higher hormone level. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, which, yeah. So um, that can be a reason. Uh, also called scarring. Um, your clitoris can be buried or uh, can also swell up. Uh, your, your labia can resorb and, and shrink, which would happen to me. Um, and even your vagina entrance can tighten as well. Um, yeah. You can also get it anywhere over the vulva area and as well as your uh, back passage as well, which they call the figure of eight. Um, you can also get lichen sclerosis other areas of the body. You can That's get it right. on your breasts, under your breasts. People get it on their neck, up their armpit. You can get it in other areas. Yes. And most doctors, if they find it first on another area of your body, they will straight away ask you, have you got it on your vulva yeah. as well? Because I was going to um, ask one of these um, things that I, because my group is for vaginal um, actually, but I have a lot of the LS ladies come across as well because they quite often, especially their menopause, will have both symptoms at the same time, which you, you can. But for you know, the, the LS ladies, they're itching, especially at night, can drive them to insanity. Yeah, yeah. they say night time's worse because your mind's not occupied by anything else. Yeah. Um, so you have to think about it, itches. The same as when you feel unwell anyway, when you've got flu or anything else, you always mm -hmm. feel worse at night. Yeah. Down um, and you're hot as well in bed, so yeah, it is quite often. Yeah. Mine was always worse at night. Um, there's, a, there's a lot of symptoms to it, and you don't have to have all the symptoms. Some people no. don't have any itching, some no. people don't have any white areas. So no, that's what I was going to say because so many doctors say, because in my group, I think there's eight ladies who um, have none of the whiteness at all, and they don't even have any um, absorbed labia and all those things. Um, but they just were not getting better and better. And they were given a diagnosis of vulvodynia or something, which is just an umbrella term for pain in the vulva area. And those that have had biopsies, they actually have LS. So they, and they don't have, but these are obviously much rarer, but you just can't assume, can you? 
No, you, you can't shoot. And, and you can also have more than one condition at once as well. You can have, yeah. you, know, you can have multiple rolfer conditions at once, make it even harder. And a lot of these conditions are quite similar. Um, yes. Because the, the symptoms I had growing up, to start with, it was just pure itchy and sores. And the sores and the bruising was just through itching and rubbing. Mm -hmm. um, going to the toilet, uh, urine, I notice makes a difference. Also, stress as well, I think, makes a big difference. Well, with any condition, uh, doesn't it? Yeah. 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 Well, when, when yeah. I look back at the times in my life that were very stressful, um, I actually remember being in the worst time when my, my mum's funeral. Um, so, yes, I think it's stress mm. can, can do a lot of conditions, but obviously, yes. LS helps a lot of people. Food, some people say that certain food sugars make a difference, um, some don't. Some have gone on really strict diets. Um, and have noticed a difference. Some do. I, I've never noticed any difference with. with, with I think food. it's it's trial it's trial and error, isn't it? I think. <laughs> it's yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I have I have a really really healthy diet. I you know I've been on a seven mile walk this morning. I'll go and do another couple of miles, and these cures that all this will stop me having my other things. It hasn't made any difference yeah, yeah. to my vaginal valve problems at all. Yeah. But, but yeah, so you don't have to have all the symptoms. I, I only really had itching was my main one. Um, I didn't notice I was, it was white, to be honest. So, I, I was so, uh, so you had, word. did you have the figure of eight? You probably had. Um, yes, I did. I did. Yeah. But very faintly, I didn't have it as bad as some people do. Right. Uh, Mine was quite faint, which is why I never noticed. Um, yes. And I, I call it more, I use the word silvery more than white, okay. because mine weren't necessarily thick white plaques. Right. Um, mine were more silvery white. Um, mm -hmm. and, and they were, and they were, mine were more paper thin than they yes. were thick. So, right. and I only really got the blisters or the red, red soreness if I was wearing jeans or I rubbed. Mm -hmm. uh, obviously, you going to the toilet, urinate makes it worse. Um, obviously using toilet roll toilet paper can agree with that you know that also when you're wiping makes it itch you end up rubbing yeah. that's yeah. how i would make mine worse i think so i didn't have yes. a, a load of the symptoms um yes. you know i never had any splits or cuts really um not proper ones until like my late thirties when i got the really big one yeah. which was yeah. in my um, peroneum area yeah. and that yeah. was a really big split yeah. cut um, yeah. But apart from that, I never really, I had a problem with sexual intercourse, really. No, um, it didn't really no. impact on my day-to-day -day life. As so. I didn't, wouldn't let it, to be honest. Um, yes. It was irritable, and it was, I did, you know, pseudo cream was my friend for many years. I yeah. used to use that, because that helped when you had sores. Um, so, yeah, it didn't really impact as much as it does some people. Okay. Because so, um, it does. Um, so I was going to say, because um, we're halfway through, the clock goes very quickly. Um, the... So when you say the vagina entrance can really tighten, it can literally almost sort of close for some ladies, can't it? Yes, um, yeah. Completely. I, never, I never noticed, but thinking back, I could never use um, tampac, tampons, um, right. and, and smear tests were uncomfortable. And again, you just I didn't think it, you know, I just didn't realise, didn't put two and two together until the last couple of years. So that's probably yes. why. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah, I personally think, and the dermatologists I've heard spoke to, and I'm not a specialist, but I think when... If your vulva isn't getting better after a certain amount of time, it is beyond an average GP. And I think we have to be referred because these dermatologists I have seen have said the women are all being referred far too late. Yeah. You know, yeah, but GPs do yeah. not have the training. It's not their fault, but there's not, they, they can't, you know, they learn, a, they know a lot about, a little bit about a lot about, you know, so much. And the amount of training in the vulva area, it's just not possible. And I think it, referral needs to be sooner than it is. Some gynecologists, yes, as well, they can do it, especially if they've had extra training within the vulva area. But, um, um, yeah, do you have an opinion on uh, gynecologists or a yeah, derma? It is hard. It, it can be a GP, dermatologist or gynecologist. It all depends if they've had experience in vulva conditions, especially LS, because unless they have, because... We're told it's rare, we're told it's uncommon, and we're told it's common. We're told all three. It depends mm. who you see. Obviously, yeah. if they are specialists or, or they've seen it a lot in their GP surgery, they will call it common. But those that haven't, um, I don't think it's rare. I don't even think it's uncommon. It's just not recognised. No, well, I saw a tweet by a, on, with you a, a few weeks ago by, a, I think it's a vulva dermatologist, who said LS is not um, rare, it's just not recognised. It's actually common. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Because, yeah. Because it's getting diagnosed as thrush or other conditions. Yes, it, yeah. It's hard. You know, that, I'm not here to, to, to bash GPs. It oh, no, hard. no. And, and there are a lot of conditions which are very similar yeah. to yeah, yeah, um, yeah. You know, even VIN, pre-cancer, um, yeah. it's hard, hard to detect. Yeah. That's white as well. Can yeah. be black and, and itchy and sores. You know, yeah. there, are, there are so many vulva conditions. Yeah, I mean, it's down hard. to us 
ask the patient to a um not self-treat with all these products if, you, if you're not getting rid of what you have stop self-treating yeah go to your gp and if your gp can't make you better and they're trying but they can't just say please can you refer me on yeah. we have to ask that quest question to be referred on yeah. and another thing that both you and i really talk about is um women have got to know their anatomy you, you know your vagina is inside you cannot see your vagina you it's your vulva that will be itching you know a lot of women say my my vagina is really itching i say well you can't get your hand up there and be scratching it you're itching your vulva so we need to get out the parts correct but we also say a mirror so you talk about the fact that we need to examine ourselves regularly Yes, you, you need, to, you know, everyone should anyway. I wish I had done. That's one thing I wish I had done is look properly throughout the years so that you know what your normal is, what it looks like, what it's meant to look like, so that you know what's different and what's changed. Some people don't like looking because they're scared or, 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 you know, it's just you've got to look uh, at least once a month if there's nothing wrong with your vulva. Um, if you have got a condition like lichen sclerosis, then you should really try and look once a week. Um, yeah. with a mirror is you know, different ways of looking it's sometimes difficult to look if you're overweight um, or you've got other disabilities but you can have find, get find find a, way. a yeah. photograph get a yeah. partner to take a photo yes, you can get someone to take a photo is a good idea there's lots of apps where they keep your photos stored privately um, so take photographs so you can look back yourself because you imagine things oh look at that lamp but you probably already had it for years not known yes. so you, you, you yeah. need to look regularly because you like to um, look and feel you say feel as well don't you yeah okay. yeah and have a real can be inside as well as outside so you, you need to know what it's meant to look like before and after so definitely yes. look regularly and carry on looking as well because you don't yeah. always notice that you've got a tear or an ulcer unless it's in an area that's been hurt and sting yeah because yeah. so yeah, i had never looked until i until it, once i got on this path of vaginal problems and vulva problems and i looked one day i hadn't looked since i had my children nearly 30 or, you know like it was 25 ish years ago then and quite honestly i was shocked at what i looked at what i saw i don't ha i didn't have um uh, lichen sclerosis. The reason they thought I had lichen sclerosis is because I was pallor, but I wasn't because because vaginal atrophy can make you look pallor. You can become yeah. very pale. But I was yeah. also raw red, so yeah, it so was hard to work. Hard. Well, some people are. Some people call it red. Some call it pink. Some call it blotchy. Some call it white. So it, it's what's you know it's what it's what's yeah. what's your yeah. So then you go on to the different types of um, medical treatments and then all the other things I have. I don't know if you've got any, but I've got all the different things for yeah, washing. Got, yeah, you have, that's good then. Yeah, so, so, well. <laughs> so you've got your actual medical treatments and, and talk about the, um, the, the steroids and the fact that the treatment is for life because there seems to be some confusion where you completely stop and all that. Yeah. So if you discuss steroids and not to be scared of them. Yeah, well, the, the treatment is, is, is topical steroids, which... Uh, a lot of dermatologists say it's got to be a, a strong steroid to start with. So it's got to be aggressive, you know, and you've got f a lot of them say it takes three months minimum for it to even work anyway, which is why you need follow ups. A lot of good GPs or dermatologists will see you after two weeks or three weeks, but definitely they should see you three months. Unfortunately, it doesn't happen a lot probably because of money in the NHS, but um, if you're given a steroid, it should be a potent one. Um, I myself use, um, Clopisol, which is Dermavate in the UK, um, which is a strong potent steroid, which um, again, that is also cis uh, changes. Um, most of them will say to use it once or twice a day for at least one month to start with, um, and then cut back to once every other day for a month, and then twice a week, and then carry on for life for maintenance, because it is a lifelong condition. Mm -hmm. LS, there is no cure, unfortunately, no. this time. Hopefully one day there will be. Um, but you do need the steroids. Um, to, man to maintain it um, like you can go into remission without even knowing you're you know that you're having symptoms because I, when I first saw my dermatologist I was having no symptoms and I thought I was okay which told me that I was still active I still had active LS so you don't always know it, you've got it which is why it's important to carry on with steroids there mm. are many steroids to use um, Emma will put a list up for me um, so don't worry because you're not on the one I'm on it's no different but because are different ointments things. better than creams generally yeah, um, yes that's the same, that's down. most people find that the ointment is better than a cream because of the ingredients um, I've had both and I never found a difference in either but a lot of people might start on one particular steroid to cream and get irritated um, as they change also you know not one thing fits all there are multiple steroids out there so you need to find the one that works for you and there's this different strengths there's potent there's potent there's medium there's mild so you need to find the steroid that works for you and helps and then you need to keep using it for life um, after the initial uh, time of using it 
when I first started using it, it burned. And I thought, this can't be right, it's burning, I can't use it, it's wrong. But then I was told by three different dermatologists in the same month that that's normal. Quite a lot of people, when they first use the steroid apply, it does burn and sting, but just persevere with it. Um, they say a lot of people think they're allergic to products when they're not. It's just a side effect of them first using it. Give it, give it a chance, give it a yes. week or two. Don't yeah. just stop after the first go. Yeah. Me, it burns. Give it a week or two before you yeah. change to a different one. Yes. Go back to your doctor and ask for a different one because it could just be a mild side effect you're having and it could get better. Mine did. Mine doesn't burn at all. It mine relieves it. Um, I'm happy to carry on using Dermavate because it works for me. Yeah. Um, a lot so how often do you use it now, now that you're under I, control? Now, now I use it um, twice a week when I remember because I'm in remission. That's one of the things that we do forget to do is remember. But twice a week now. Um, a lot of people do change um, to a different steroid when it's maintenance. They go on to a lower strength one. So you're either changing the frequency or the strength of your steroid. So you're yeah. not using a potent steroid forever that you, you, know, you can use a lower one and less amount of time. Some people can leave it a bit longer, once a fortnight if they're doing fine. Um, but as long as you carry on using it. And the reason being is because the Australians have done a study. That's all that's in um on our website, um, they've done a, a small study of people that used a steroid, didn't use a steroid, used it intermittently because they forgot, and it proved it, it showed that those that didn't, that did get vulva cancer. Right. Now, although vulva cancer is extremely rare, they say between three and five percent, you know, which that, that means 97 percent of those with LS won't get cancer. So don't yes. you know, worry about it, but just be aware that it's there. Um, so, you know, that's why we think that steroids sh should be used for life. A lot of yes. people are scared to use them because years ago uh, we were told by one recent dermatologist in a webinar that we watched recently that a lot of GPs, when steroids first come out, they were wonderful and they yes. were given far too many uh, conditions, overused, yeah. used yes. too much, especially in eczema. Um, sufferers. And that's when I noticed that it was thinning the skin and they was getting reactions mm -hmm. and things were all bad. But the vulva skin is different to any other skin on our body. Yes. So it doesn't, the, the steroid isn't thinning our skin. LS thins our skin. Yes. So the idea of the steroid is, is to help inflammation. Yeah, yeah. So using that is what's going to help. So yeah. if, you, if you've got LS on your groin, which some people have, then maybe don't use Dermavate or stronger steroids on the groin because the groin skin is thinner and that could thin the skin. Okay. It's different skin. So a lot of people might use a strong steroid on their vulva area, but on their groin they use a mild steroid. Okay. Um, but you know, you've got to remember a lot of the side effects that you get from using steroids are also a symptom of LS. So, so many people get confused and blame the steroids when it's not the steroids. Yeah. Or they're trying to use too many products because they're, they're trying to chase a cure almost. Yes, and when right, you hear yeah. somebody else is using a different cream, yeah. they swap creams and wonder yeah, why yeah. they get deviated. Yeah. So, I've got a list of the things that I've used. Yeah. Um, I said about the steroids, but there are there's multiple ones. You've got to find what works for you. Um, quite often, our doctors give us. Things like Dermal 500. And it's the same for ladies with vagina atrophy as well. Yeah. <laughs> also for eczema and, and psoriasis. Yeah. That's good to wash in. Um, yeah. As well as I, I'm giving emulsifying ointment. Sometimes it is all backwards, but you can get it. Here's my different. one. Yeah. <laughs> um, which we use to wash in instead of using any other soaps. Um, when you use the tub, obviously make sure that you use a spatula or a spoon rather than putting your hand in because you've got infection risk. But you put it in a bit um, and you just mix it with a bit of water you make it into a bit of a... Yes. Yeah, depending on what you're using it for. If you're using yeah. it to brush with, then you rub it with water, so that becomes yeah. like or, soap. If yeah. you're using it as a barrier, then don't yeah. put as much water on. No. Use it as a barrier for when you go to the toilet. Um, also, they are, which a lot of people don't realise, these are moisturisers as well. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. you can use them to wash in as a barrier and moisturise. I and shave my legs with that, it's, and under my armpits, it's very yeah. good. Yeah. Uh, moisturise is as important as a steroid, because obviously, yeah. you know, you're dry. So yeah. you need to use a lot, of, a lot of it. So I also use this as well, which my GP gave me. Yeah, what's the uh, dip the base? It's double, double base, base. Yeah. Double base. Okay. It's an extra strong moisturiser. Okay. I, was, I was giving that more for my cancer treatment site, which I'll talk about tomorrow. Um, also, another friend of ours is the Perry Bottle. Oh, that's I when you pee, is it? Yeah. yeah. It's bath. Um, which you can help if it burns when you go to the toilet. This I, always, I use this and got this. 
after um, hydrotherapy, but also it's good for LS as well. Um, also, people put salt salts in their bath, um, Dead Sea salts, um, you know, uh, yeah. taking salt, which can help some. For me, it makes mine worse because it dries too much. It's drying, isn't it? I tried it as well, but it's really drying. Yeah, so it soothes. It's a good, good way of soothing yeah. to try that. Yeah. Some people use coconut oil, yeah. which I don't use too often. I use it more for my radiation burns. Because coconut mm. oil has still got ingredients in that can irritate some people. Some love it. It's not good for a lubricant, but it's good to uh, yeah. moisturise. Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's lots of other things as well. You can use things like lidocaine and also Instagel, which is a good idea if, if, you're, if it's quite painful. Um, not recommended to use just to have sex for. You know, no. if it hurts, it's hurting for a reason. Don't numb it. Yeah. For a reason. Absolutely. But yeah, yeah. But it's, good to, it's good for soothing irritation. And that hurts if it's you know, really going for a bad flare, yeah. really. Yeah, yeah. Um, also we've got um, hydrocortisones, you can use different types of creams for itching um, recently my dermatologist gave me Billamon Plus cream which I started using on my groin and my c-section scar because I was really itchy and irritable and it, it really helped so okay, again, yeah. we'll look for things which, which help for dry skin on yeah, other areas yeah. Um, yeah. and I also because of my radiotherapy and the problems we're going to talk about tomorrow for the side effects, um, bowel movements cause a problem using toilet roll. So I also use, I use pseudo cream for a lot of years, which is also... And important. titanium. Yeah. Titanium. yeah. Mess, yeah. Messy, but that was brilliant. Yeah. That made, yeah. That, that made yeah. a big difference to me. So there are lots of other things you can use. Uh, <laughs> of yeah. course, um, silk. Yes, yeah. two main ones that GPs recommend, um, which, again, you've got to find out which irritates you and which don't. Because yeah, I, I suggest because some of you know is doing a patch with with the lubricants because even the best ones can cause problems. Do a patch test on your wrist. Yeah, yeah. Just yeah. to give you an idea because the vulva is so sensitive. Yeah. Uh, and what I did want to mention amongst this list of all your bits and pieces is the ladies. And I know it's not standard treatment. I don't think I don't know enough, but lots of ladies who come across to my group then realise about the local eastern creams and add that to their treatment if they've got yeah, specialists who understand it. And that can, that can be the icing on the cake for some of them. Yeah, I definitely... Well, you, we'll talk more about it tomorrow because I need to know about that as well because going into early menopause because of cancer treatment, that's a different story yeah. to down there. So, yeah. yeah, we'll do that as well. Yeah, because we've got some ladies in, in the group who are using the local eastern cream alongside their steroid cream, obviously using one at one end and one at the other, and it has made such a huge, huge difference. Um, and I did want to ask you something about um, Fenton's procedure. Do many people have that done for LS? Uh, yes, that, that, the treatment side is, is mainly obviously for the steroids. There are new things coming out. There's laser, you know, there's Mona Lisa talked about. There, there's loads of rich... But it's the Fenton. Some people talk about having it so that, yeah. so because it's become so tight, they have yeah, it too. Yeah, that, that's well, surgery. Um, a lot of it is still new. And a lot, a lot of people that have had it, it doesn't last. It then see. grows back anyway. Yeah, it closes so back up. <laughs> so I assume you use, yeah. Yeah, you use dilators, don't you? Yeah, yeah. Because some people have had yeah. the procedures and they worked. But some yeah. of them says they haven't and it's come okay. back. Which is okay. why I think a lot of the new treatments, which are all still new at the moment, which are, like I said, about the laser and, the, you know, the ocean. A lot of these are done in America as well. And just yeah. in my opinion only, I think it's a money-making scheme. Yeah, and, and it hasn't that, been that long. It hasn't been that no, long It's enough. not been that I've, long enough. Until, it's, yeah. until the NHS uses it or recommend it, I think. I, I mean, they are actually... It's expensive as well, isn't it? Yeah. And you they've they've done... No, sorry. Yeah, we were, we were thinking. We're both thinking we stopped and we haven't. So, the NHS have done a trial on on it for LS. Yeah. Um, and it's it, you can find it on Twitter under Hormone Equilibrium. One of the yeah, and it does. It's having very promising results. Yeah, yeah, but but you have to wait. It's got to be a long yeah, time yet. Yeah, it's got to be. And a long we don't time. know as well. You know, the important no. thing is how it could help your LS symptoms short term. We don't know about long term damage. No, that's right. We definitely don't. Old. You yeah. still need to use your steroid, in, you know, because it's that's, that's yeah. known at the moment. That steroid is, is for health. life. At the, at the yeah. bottom of your notes, I can't read what it says. It says something at the bottom, the second page. What does this say? Showed helps cancer. Something, um, August, uh, uh, Ameri Australians. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I said about that. Yeah, it's a study. Okay, yes, yeah, study. yeah, okay. Um, so I'm on the from... third page now, Claire. Regards, yeah. um, you go through all that, the causes and, and not really knowing and, and everything. Yeah, um, but they don't know enough. There's not enough research that we know about. Hereditary, some say they're not sure. Some say it's not. Um, my opinion is I don't think they know it's hereditary because 
a lot of family members don't talk to each other. They're embarrassed or, or don't talk to each other, so they're not going to know. Um, I can't talk to my mum because she's no longer here, but I do remember her having vulva issues, and I remember her mentioning a steroid as well years ago. And when we cleared out her stuff, I found a tub of steroid like mine. Oh, wait, it sounds a bit... I think she had LS, but probably wasn't diagnosed with it. Um, a lot of a lot of people don't. They say fifteen percent of LS sufferers have a family member with it, but that's going to be a low percentage because you know we don't talk to each other. We don't, families don't often talk to each other. Sisters, mums, aunties, especially a lot of the older generation wouldn't have done. So I don't think we're ever going to know for years to come whether it is hereditary or not. Um, there are uh, members in our group which do have um, daughters with it, or they have aunts and mums. So we do know that you know it is in families. But, but it's probably the law of averages anyway. Yeah, so you don't best, know. And obviously, you can get men can get LS, boys can get LS, any ages can get LS. So all talk about LS and just make sure you're aware of the symptoms and what it could be, and that there is a small chance that you know you could have it because you know you don't know. My daughter knows everything. Obviously, I've been quite vocal with it all, yeah. but you know you need to make sure that everyone in your family knows about it because it's a, although it's a small risk, there's a cancer risk, so you could yeah. be saving their life. Yeah. Apart from the years of it getting told it's thrush. You could be saving their life. So yes. talk about it. Tell them yes. about the symptoms. Even if you just email them some of um, the information that we get off of the British Association Dermatologist website is brilliant, the British Skin Foundation, NHS even. Look at those because, you know, there's quite good, inf good information on there. Um, also said about, um, obviously, the ages too. Um, men can get it. It's not as... as um, prominent in men actually it's, it's again it's reported in women which is why we don't know if it's rare or it's common some say one in 30 some say one in 50 and some say one in 100 women so mm -hmm. you know uh, yeah. we, we don't know doctors don't know um it's, it's unrecognized disease i think that's why it's classed as rare because people aren't getting diagnosed with it because what i read that that in the 1850s type thing it's considered just a uh, a sti wasn't it? Yeah. Because yeah. so, yes. there was... Even children as well, uh, years mm. ago, when yeah. children had LS, they thought they'd been... Um, sexually abused. Yeah, sexually abused or, you know, some sort of trauma. Um, so, yeah, so it has come on a lot over the years. Yeah, um, yes. and, and the reason as well behind it is, what is LS? Um, we don't, they don't know. They think mm. it's autoimmune, hormone-linked. Mm. Um, again, but there's just not enough research, no money in it. Um, to find out more um, and just throw the steroid at you and that's sort of all they leave yeah. you with yeah um, but hopefully that start to change the more we shout about it and more talk about it as well so it gets talked about more yeah yeah and, and it says on on your list on setting women is commonly postmenopausal and, and when you because there was a, a tweet the other day um about um autoimmune conditions in women and you read all the list and women are, you know, you're up in the nineties compared to the men with so many conditions, thyroid, uh, just, just across the board, everything. And they're more common after menopause. They, they have to be a hormone link. Yeah. You know? Yeah. They do say that. Uh, uh, lots of women are, have got it obviously in their twenties and thirties. So, yeah. that, you know, but I just think the reason why I'm more diagnosed um, at that sort of age, um, post menopausal is because, that's how long it takes to get diagnosed. Bad. And, and to get and diagnosed. Because what, yeah. well. yeah. what, what is the average... time? notice it as well. What is the average... Not embarrassed. Yeah. What is the average time you say for someone to get... Is it 10 or 15 years or something, did you say, to get diagnosed? That, that's what a lot of conditions are, yeah. It can take a lot of time. Mm -hmm. Most of those in our support groups talk about um, for years they've been going backwards and forwards or had it years. When I look back, they realise they've probably had it since a child as well. Um, yeah. Lots of, of look back and realise that they probably did have the symptoms yeah. for years. A, a lot of women are too embarrassed to go to their doctors so they self-treat anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and obviously, and, and some of them as well. I suppose when you get to, maybe when you get to an older age, like in my case, I got more confident when I got older, so I didn't yes. go to the BP. So yes. there might be another reason why, you know, more getting diagnosed in their 40s and 50s because mm -hmm. that's when they probably aren't as embarrassed maybe with their GPs yeah. um, and I think that's when more people are getting diagnosed between the ages of 40 and 60 but I think that's because you know that's how long it's taken them to get diagnosed or yeah. how long it's yeah. taken them to get a GP and now the GPs do think that it is postmenopausal. so if you're younger a lot of our members are getting told when they mention LS to their doctors could it be LS or could it be vulva cancer no you're too young yeah. and like dismiss because they're too young but obviously it can be any age and it is any age yes yeah it's obviously more commonly diagnosed in that age group i think yeah 
And because it's Mental Health Week this week, we need to talk about the mental health impact of these conditions um, and on relationships, if you're in a relationship, because we've got 12 minutes left, because it literally cuts you off when it's it as good as. So if you can talk about the mental health side of, um, yeah, what it does, you know, I know for myself, and I have nothing as bad as you, but well, you involves, know, it's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's the fact that it's taboo, it's hard to talk about. It's not like it's, you know, your arm or your eye, where you can talk about it and, you know, most people don't know anyone with it because they haven't talked about it. And when people do start to talk about it more, they, some people say, oh, I've got that as well. Yeah. You know? so, um, until we start to talk about it, I think it is going to be worse for us. A lot of um, relationships break down, um, partners leave, divorces, um, you know, even suicidal thoughts because mm -hmm. they're not getting diagnosed or when they are diagnosed, you're not getting help. All the doctors aren't saying the same thing. You know, they're all saying different things about the steroid. Oh, it thins your skin, use it sparingly. You know, like, like the, the amount you should use as well. That's all this sort of stuff I've missed out on. But it's all is, it is, is it a piece, a, piece. a small P? Yeah. Again, that depends on, on, the, amount. Amount. on the amount. On the amount. Yeah. P size is enough just to do the vulva area. And a second P size, if it's a figure of eight. Because the tube lasts last roughly three months. Is that three right? Months should last six months if it's maintenance really yeah. um, but it kind of depends on how bad your ls is if it is start off with that tube should only last you three months because you should be using it quite a lot for the, to get it under control but so again you know, like the mental health side of that is is that you're told so many different things the steroids thin your skin try this don't try that um you're not given any help you brush the side because they don't know what it's like for you um it's, you've got no one to talk to about it um, obviously, like I said before, that you know relationships break down because uh, sexual intercourse is, is painful um, and it puts you off. You're scared that if you do for days later, you're you know you're going to be agony and regretting it. Um, that side of it is hard as well. So it, it does it, it, it does get to you. Like I suppose a lot of the conditions do. But one that's in an area where no one talks about or you're embarrassed, I think that makes it a lot harder for some people. Yes. Yeah. And you know, in, in our group, you know, that's the. But the most part of it is, is that they're upset, they can't take any more, it changes their quality of life. Some people have it mild, don't you know, don't be scared out there. Um, some people do have it mild and it doesn't impact their life, you know, hardly at all. But then you've got the other end of the scale where it does, you know, you can't walk, you can't sit, you have to, you know, no underwear or find underwear that first fits you. You can't ride your horse anymore when you used to ride horses, you can't ride a bike, it's difficult to run. Um, you know, so it imp impacts different ways of your life, which obviously makes it harder for you. Um, and some people are suicidal because they just can't take any more, yeah. you know, especially at night time when you're feeling down and you're feeling worse and you can't see the end, um, which is why support group groups help. Having others that know what it's like, having a support group where you can just comment straight away, you know, not feeling great tonight. And then loads of people come on and help you. Yeah, I know what that's like. And, you know, tomorrow's another day, uh, which is why, you know, we have to support groups, which all those are on our, our website. Our website, yes. by the way, is LS, uh, VC UK Awareness. Um, Emma put that up for us. If you go on my page or even Emma's page, um, you'll find it all on our website. But, you know, you need others to talk to because that, yeah, yeah. for me, has what made a difference to my life. If I had no one to talk to, it would make it so much harder. Yeah. Having you to talk to, having Emma to talk to, having Emma, I wouldn't have carried on with the awareness that I do because yeah. mental health, you know, is a big impact of depressed anxiety. You know, it gets hard. You know, you, you, yeah. having a condition which affects the vulva, you get trolls, you get stupid messages, you get hate, you know, you get stupid things. Um, you get, you know, things that are just silly, but they affect you on a day where you've been speaking to people daily because we, we both get messages, like I'm sure you do, for messages from people that are suicidal, that need yeah. help that aren't getting anywhere with their doctors or worried or... i mean they're daily they are daily messages they're not yeah you know, yeah yeah, yeah. You know, and, you it, and you have to try and not take it all on yourself because you have you're yeah. suffering from whatever that yeah. condition is yourself yeah that's right. So you, so that's you just why, signpost. Yeah, I wouldn't have carried on if it weren't for Emma because having someone else to talk to yeah. on your bad days yeah. pick you up um which is why you know why I speak out as much and do the awareness. I think I probably would have stopped. A lot of pages do stop because they just can't take it anymore yes. or it's yeah. depressing their own condition. So when I'm down, Emma picks me up and vice versa. Yeah. So, you know, yeah. it makes a difference to our, our mental health having each other. That's so you good. do need yeah. other people to talk to. So there's one, so there's one, um, um, some people try and use alternative therapies. Um, and you could, which are, it's not, you really do need your steroid, but what is the one that is really, should not be used, but is being promoted by certain people? Well, a lot of people think that borax is the cure. 
um, which, which is a type of laundry booster product. Yeah. Um, it's, it's banned in our country and a lot of other countries. It's not used in slime anymore. Um, it is used, um, it's a, I know it's, it is a natural mineral, but it doesn't mean it's, it's safe to use. You know, people buy it off the internet, so you don't know where it's coming from, what's in it. Even prescription stuff on the internet isn't coming with the right ingredients. So God knows okay. what's in it. It could be um, soap, you know, normal soap powder or, or flour or anything in the products that you're using. Um, and it's just not safe to use. You know, the, the British Association dermatologists and the British Skin Foundation, uh, they all say that it's dangerous and not to use. Um, some people still use it. They find it relief, which is fine if it helps them. Um, but we found a lot of in the groups world would, would sort of be quite anti-steroid and make out mm. the borax was, um, borax was, was like a cure when it's obviously it's not. It's just, it's just like a salt that would help. Yes. Some people yeah. use normal table salt or Dead Sea, which helps them. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's just... It's not no. worth the risk, in my yeah. opinion. No, um, no. Obviously, it could help, but some people don't use a steroid and just use other alternatives. That's, that's, that's the worry. The, that's the worry. You know, it's, it's one thing doing alternatives, I don't know, for a little bit of eczema on your arm or something, you, you know, but when, when you've got a potential, although small, potential risk of vulva cancer, and even if you don't go on to get vulva cancer, Emma, Emma who is on here, she's, she's suffered an awful lot herself just with, with the LF on its own, without the vulva cancer, and hers again was missed wasn't it for many many years i think it, the symptoms were sort of a teenager weren't they and they didn't get yeah. diagnosed until mid yeah. late 20s emma's been quite through quite a lot if you have a look yeah. on our on our website she talks about her story yeah she her her so much her ls was probably worse for her going growing up and going through yeah. it all whereas mine didn't really impact, impact much of, of yeah. my life until yeah. it turned to cancer which is why we work go well together because she does obviously the ls side and i do yeah. the yeah. side because yeah. i get a lot of messages people uh, message me all the time asking um what it looks like what my cancer look like how do i know because they're worried having ls that it could mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have health anxiety so you know we, we both don't mind like, like we said in the beginning we do this ourselves we're not a charity no. and we're not an organization it's all our own time we use our own money to do we do most of all our infographics uh, graphics ourselves our pictures uh, which emma does most of um, which probably hates me for because I'm constantly middle of the night thinking of ideas for a picture to do and uh, a message I do a picture for this and then we, you know we work out how to do it um so you know we do it all it's just our own time our own money like I said um we just do it because we know we both want to help people we don't yeah. want people to be like us and go through years not being yeah. diagnosed not have the right help because unfortunately a lot of doctors do give the wrong information a lot of people are just given the steroid for, to use a couple of weeks and off you go they're not they're not told to come back they're not told not to what to look out for they're not told anything when yeah. there's you know so what i like to do do is give them a leaflet um talking of leaflets actually we've done this is a we'll see it back to front this is our leaflet that me and emma done obviously we've got no money so it's all done quite basic to ourselves which you can get on the um on our website um, glossy ones we ask money for us because obviously we've got to pay for them or you can download the pfd and do it yourself give to different um practices your own you know when you go somewhere for example see a nurse or in a waiting room a lot of us we've also got two badges which we've done one for all the pants and one for less um again all our own money um which we you know trying to help to get awareness and change um the eva pill which have been great for the vulva cancer side of it. They have now, after two years of working on it, have got an online training resource, which goes out to um, all nurses. That again is on our website. Please look at that. Obviously the lockdown happened, everything sort of yeah. Yeah. stopped that a bit. But um, hopefully um, nurses will do that um, to get online training. It's not just LS, it's got vulva cancer, VIN as well, which we'll talk about more tomorrow. Um, it's got other things on it as well. So that hopefully that nurses do that. And hopefully then GPs will then look at um, which, um, you know, will make a difference, especially those nurses that, that do smears, because a lot of people assume, that I did, that nurses know about vulva conditions because they're already down there doing a smear test. They would recognise the signs of VIN, pre-cancer, um, uh, LS, you know, LP, all this, but they, a lot of them don't. No, We've got no. a lot of nurses in our group that hadn't heard of LS themselves until they were diagnosed with it. So yes, yes, a lot needs yes. to be done, and, and me, and, me and Emma are slowly trying to change that yeah well you're doing really well and we've almost come we've got literally it's gonna um i think we've got yeah so i'm gonna say we've got one minute remaining so i think um we're back tomorrow to then go on to talk about your vulva cancer journey which was truly awful um 
And the key is that if you have that constant itch, A, um, if it doesn't go and you keep being told thrush, you're not being examined, you don't have a positive, then it needs to be taken further. Examine yourself regularly so that you get to know um, what your vulva is and what it looks like for you and what's your normal. And I'm going to have to, so if you say you've got literally uh, 20 seconds. <laughs> well, Emma's been answering questions, but we'll go back and have a look at those and I could answer those and go through anything I missed on tomorrow's. Tomorrow is more about the vulva cancer, what it looks like. There's a lot of people with, with LS are worried. So I'll go through more about the cancer side of it um, and go through any things that I did miss today because, you yeah, know, they're two separate conditions. They need a lot of time on both. Yeah. So, yes, yeah, so hopefully... Right, we're going to save by literally 15 uh, seconds. Yeah. All right. Thank you to uh, Matt for answering our questions and being there. All right, then. Okay. Thank you, everyone. Bye. 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 Thank you.